scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. It takes a lot for a natural man to come to a point where you see and admit that you are limited. It is not usual with men because from the world system, the upload you receive is to the degree to which they perceive you to be superhuman or invincible. When you watch programs, you see people who display talents and the ones who display unusual talents are usually awarded. So it is, it is not human to admit weakness. There has to be a process that you pass through with God that brings you to a point where you acknowledge that our sufficiency is not of ourselves. Are we still together now? Yes. Jesus, knowing this about men, set that example with himself. Can you imagine that the God of the heavens, the God of creation, when he stripped himself and came as a little baby, at age 30, Jesus himself refused to start ministry or to start any exploit for that matter, even though he was born the word. But he was not born a man. But the moment he became a man, he knew that the weaknesses in all men was also in him. The Bible says he was in every way tempted. Is that in your Bible? Yes. And so, immediately without waste of time, he went straight to embrace the ministry of the Spirit. You would read the Bible and see how Jesus declared helplessness about himself as though he forgot he were God. I can of my own self do nothing. Realize who is speaking, the word incarnate. How could you make such a statement that almost sounds like blasphemy, that I can of my own haven't told them before your Abraham, before your father Abraham was, I am. Now you are saying, I can off my own do nothing. Hallelujah. And he embraced the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And that opened him to an incredible and an invincible life. He brought dimensions of kingdom reality that many of the people only read in scripture. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to wonder. Then they started bringing all kinds of descriptions to explain what they were seeing. For instance, in one incident, they said, this man is Beelzebub. He has to use the prince of demons because it is not human. How would you speak and then demons just leave? They didn't see that kind of thing. You had to stone the one possessed together with the demons to die. Two of them. You destroy the body, then the demon looks for another body. Here is a man who can separate with surgical precision the problem from the victim and preserve the victim while the problem goes away. And they said, no, this is not by human strength. Hallelujah. When they heard him speak, even in the synagogue, he displayed a level of wisdom. They wondered, what sort of wisdom is this? And now Jesus got to a point with the disciples. At this point, the disciples were confused. They were perplexed, wondering, what kind of man are you? We grew up with you knowing your earthly father and your mother, but you are displaying possibilities that are beyond the realm and the scope of human intelligence. Now he begins to introduce them to this personality called the Holy Spirit. Are we together now? 
Notice that Jesus was not in a hurry to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. When he started his mentorship session with them, you would think the first topic he should go to was the topic of the Spirit. He began with what we call the Beatitudes, teaching them on the realities of the kingdom, bringing to their awareness a new culture. I always wondered why he delayed on the subject of the Holy Spirit. Notice that the teaching coincided with their frustrations. They were angry and started asking themselves, look, we left all to follow you. What is in this? The more they acknowledged their weaknesses, they were pushing him to that subject. Are we together now? Finally, they get to the subject of the Holy Spirit. Then he begins to talk to them about this paraclet. This one whom they could not see, but he credited his exploits, even as the word incarnate to the Spirit. He began to use names like comforter. He began to use names like the spirit of truth. He began to use names like helper. Now at that point they did not understand. Are we together now? When we get to John 16, that should be John 16, give us verse 12. He says, I have many things to say unto you. Jesus himself. Jesus did not hide his frustration even in mentoring the disciples because they were carnally minded. And the Bible says that a carnal man, a natural man, cannot receive of spiritual things. He said, I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. 13, he says, how be it? In other words, find comfort. When he, the spirit of truth is come, he says he will guide you into how many? All truth. All truth. The God that knows all truth must be fearful. He will guide you into all truth. Then he says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and then he will show you things to come. The disciples thought they understood what Jesus said quite honestly. They did not understand what Jesus said because if you really understand... If, if, if you understood what Jesus said, there are some questions that should follow. They didn't ask it, meaning they were not interested. All they were interested in was the restoration of the kingdom of Israel, where there would be a king and they would get their rewards for living, fishing and following Jesus. That was all their concern. They didn't follow him just because of love. Here was someone who had proposed a more superior life. And they hoped that with his invincible power, he would dethrone Herod one day and be king. Then they would be members of his cabinet. That was the whole journey of their discipleship. There was nothing eternal or souls. That was none of their business. That was why when Jesus died, they were angry. When he said he was leaving, they said, where are you going to? We left our wives. We left fishing. You have troubled the Roman government and you are leaving. It was not compassion. It was anger. They said, you are not going anywhere. You fermented trouble all over Rome. Now you want to leave. Peter said, you are not going. It is the reason why when they finally caught Jesus, their hopes were dashed. This man who raised the dead, so there is weakness in you. Judas was so confident about his power, he could even make money from him. Because he, he would make money because he knew that if they came to catch Jesus, he would make a mess of them. That was why Judas could not even use the money. These guys had so trusted the invincibility of Jesus, they started inventing skills to cash out of that power. Now, follow me closely, please. Are we together now? Now Jesus gives himself to die. And all of them are amazed. Peter is disappointed. The disciples run away. Then he leaves to die. And Peter in his frustration goes back to fishing. I wasted three and a half years of my life following someone who proposed a more superior way of living. Let me not make a fool of myself. And the Bible says in John chapter 21 that Peter said, I go a fishing and the disciples say, we go with you. In other words, look, this is over. Let's just be on our way going. Suddenly, while they were at the seashore, laboring for nothing. Because you see, there are times, you may have heard me say, when your net is correct. There are times when your location is correct, the sea. There are times when your skill is correct, yet you will still not catch fish. I do not see anything wrong as far as producing results is concerned. Peter was a skilled fisherman. His nets were the right tools, 
the boat was there, the sea was the right place, yet there was no catch. Now, that was, it was at that point that Jesus showed up. And he looks at them and says, little children, have you any catch? And Peter wondering, who is this man? Notice, every time Jesus saw insufficiency, he quickly rushed to explain something. There is something with the dealings of God with men that the weakness of men attracts God so much to them because it is, is a vocal expression of the need for his ministry in their lives. Are we together now? Every, in the healing of Jesus, Anytime people express weakness and limitation, he, he responded to them immediately, including blind Bartimeo, thou son of David. I don't know what is the formula for getting your attention, but please, by all means, I just know you are the son of David. Have mercy on me. The woman with the issue of blood. Every time Jesus saw people declaring their weakness and their need for him or for God, he responded. This is a very powerful secret. I know why I'm telling you this because there are so many people who wonder why the Holy Ghost cannot do much in them because you are approaching God from a standpoint of strength and sufficiency and the Holy Spirit is so gentle that your pride is a voice that can drive him. It is true. It is the reason why in using men, he will usually use very weak men. Ordinary men that do not have the comeliness that you may think should be desired. So that the excellency of power, you can see the difference between the man and the man anointed. Are we together? Yeah. So Jesus began to talk to them about the Holy Spirit. And then... He spoke very profoundly when they received the Holy Ghost. They began to understand the things that he said. Then we get to the Pauline epistle. This strange man who now had an encounter with the Spirit. And he made a very profound statement. Romans 8.26. I hope and pray that we are following. Romans 8.26. Let's read together if you can see it. Ready? One to read. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Please stop. The Bible says that same Spirit, that there are many things that he does in the life of the believer. And among them, Paul is teaching them by revelation that the Holy Spirit can help our infirmity. The word infirmity there was not accurately translated because it would look like sickness. The word there should be limitation, not just bodily or um, maybe some kind of biological deformity. Likewise, the Spirit also helped our limitations. That every time a man is limited, spiritually, financially, organizationally, you are calling for the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. But that rule number one, you must come to a point where you acknowledge your limitation. This is not, this is not some kind of demeaning who you are in Christ. It's a state of acceptance and admission that except God helps me. Now you understand the scripture. It is by thee that I run through a troop. It is by my God that I leap over a wall. He took out time to emphasize the basis for his results. Hallelujah. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. John chapter 3 from verse 1 and 2. He says, for no man can do these miracles and accept the Lord be with him. There are results that you cannot get alone. Accept the Lord be with you. In fact, there are dimensions of results in this kingdom that implicate you immediately that you have done business with the realm of the spirit, whether diabolically or genuinely. But out of the assistance of the realm of the spirit, there are heights you cannot attain. It is not given unto men. Whether it is Janus and Jambers or Moses, turning a rod to a snake needs power. Whether it is by God or by magic, in either ways, there has to be a partnership with the realm of the spirit. Why am I saying this? Because there are people in this conference who this year you will command this very strange order of results in the name of Jesus Christ. 
that you will not only celebrate what God is doing in the life of your man of God and his dear wife, but that you will access a potent secret. By mid-year, when you look at your life, people will have to call you and say, tell me the truth. Is there anything you need to open up to me about? Because I do not understand the you of January and the you of now. What suddenly happened? When they looked at Saul, they said, when has Saul become a prophet? What happened to you? We knew when you left home helplessly, clueless, with no, if you were that much of a prophet, why did you have to look for a donkey for three days? That now you are returning with precision and even prophesying. Let me speak over someone in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare by God who helps men and by the power that raised Christ from the dead. You will access superior help from the spirit and begin to command results in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit. Behind the exploits of great men in the kingdom is the help and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Unassisted by the spirit of grace, you cannot produce results that is consistent with the might and the power of God. No man can do these things except God be with him. No man can do these things except God be with him. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. The Lord walking with them, confirming the word following. You read from scripture and you read even through modern history. All of the men and women, especially within the church circle, who were mightily used by God in their generations. They were men and women, some uneducated, some weak. Some came from backgrounds of all kinds of things. Regardless of those limitations, you listen to their story. The punchline in their story is when they encountered this spirit of God called the Holy Spirit. At that point, things began to shift in their lives. Ordinary women encountered the spirit of God. And some of them, though naive, though uneducated, inexposed, he began to help them and they commanded levels of dominion and power that was global. Regardless the limitations that came with their generation. Let me tell you one truth. There is no describing how far the spirit of God is able to take a man and to help a man. I am saying it to you today. If you ever see anybody that you admire, whether used by God in ministry like your man of God or in business, any dimension of kingdom exploit, provided it is revealing Jesus, the signature of the spirit must be there. By this teaching, immediately God is telling someone, if you don't give up on your strength, you will only recycle last year, this year. Regardless what prophecy comes, by ignoring the Holy Spirit, you will abort the potency of the word. The Bible said the seed was the word, yet it still died because of the soil it came upon. Are we together now? Yes. I learned this very early. How helpless a man can be in ministry respectfully speaking there are people in ministry struggling from pillar to post trying all kinds of formulas in isolation to the ministry and the help of the holy spirit and they find out that by the arm of the flesh shall no man prevail the world is too busy too selfish and too wicked for people to dedicate their attention to you it takes a force that is not human to coordinate people to look at you know you love no no except you do not you've not lived long enough in this world what will make a man wake up from his house and think about you and call you and say for the rest of your life i want to bless you that man who wants to bless you has relatives who are in need it does not just happen listen to me very carefully you are a man of God just because you are sincere and a person of character. It's not enough to make people leave their homes to come and to submit, to sit down, to listen and to learn. No, no, no. How about resources? It is one thing to have your skill like Peter and you will be at the sea and yet you will not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need a superior dimension of help. It is not because you are in Abia. 
it is simply because there is a dimension of grace and help that you have not accessed this is my assignment tonight to introduce you to take away struggling and weariness and bring us to a point where you are empowered by a dimension of sufficiency that you will walk out of this meeting tonight rejoicing knowing that every prophetic word that came from the man of God to you was spoken because he expected that in receiving it you will honor the ministry of the Holy Spirit to make it come to pass. If Jesus, the son of the living God, did not ignore the ministry of the Holy Spirit, as the word incarnate, he made himself so helpless, the Bible even said, of no reputation. And he would speak again and again by the Spirit. The Spirit was behind the mighty things that Jesus did. A carpenter's son who became the savior of the world. In fact, the Bible even says, if that same Spirit that raised him, raised him, that body was lying down there and the spirit of grace came, raised him back to life again. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have ignored the ministry of the Holy Spirit largely and even those who talk about the Holy Spirit only focus on his power. And they do not even care about a relationship to understand the dynamics of his help. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, the most classic scripture that talks about the coming of the Holy Spirit. This was a statement by Jesus himself. He said, but you shall receive power after. Somebody say power after. The sequence matters. Power after. Power is only relevant when it comes after. Not power before. Not power during. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Power after the Holy Ghost. Wisdom after the Holy Ghost. Miracles after the Holy Ghost. He must precede them all and he must be greater than them all. But here is what we do. Power through or by the Holy Ghost. We are not interested in the relationship. I hear you hold power to heal the sick, to open up doors, to bring finances. Can you borrow me that power so I can shine while you stand? I don't need you. I just know that something about you can make me powerful. But follow the protocol. Power after. Power after. Check this against your, the, your Christian pursuit. If your power, your quest for power is before the ministry of the Holy Ghost, you are already at the corridors of compromise. When God calls you, he does not give you power. When he calls you, he gives you himself. He said, come, follow me, not follow it. Follow me. When God calls you, he does not even give you an assignment. Your calling is to God. Your mission is now to the world. When he calls people, he does not call them to do things. He calls them to follow him. Follow me and I will make you. When I make you, I now send you. The empowerment is at the point of being sent, not being called. You see, when he calls you, you don't need power. You need humility to learn. When he sends you, he now sends you with power. Most of us have been called, but we have not been sent. And the reason is, you will know you have not been sent because the power that backs up your being sent has not been given. But the itch to go, it is true that your calling is genuine, but have you been sent? He said, when I sent you, lackest thou anything? The plethora of lack and insufficiency is proof that the door has not been opened for you. That means you should stay, follow me, not follow it. I don't know if God is speaking to someone. He's saying many things to many of us. For some of us, God is saying, mark time with this ministry thing and get back to the secret place. The truth is that the power that follows the assignment has not yet come. You cannot have power. You cannot hide power. It's like pregnancy. A woman who is nine months and is not aware, will she look normal? Even if she does not know what is wrong, she cannot be normal. Not at nine months. Such as I have. My point is, when did he know he had it? Because once upon a time, he did not have it. And he knew he didn't have it. Now he has the boldness to say, Mr. 
I know what I have and I don't I know what I do not have I'm still learning about prosperity silver and gold I do not have I'm still learning I can't I can't guarantee on that but this one I have it already are we together now the Holy Spirit the Spirit helped our infirmities let me just show you quickly and then we pray three ways the Holy Spirit helps men to become mighty and to advance you call it a run conference I hope you know what progress is please look up progress means your next step must always be greater than your first step your initial one if your next step is at the same level with the former one it is not called progress it is called maintenance listen watch this if I move this way there is motion but this cannot be called progress for it to be called progress my next step must be beyond the former one the next one must be so if you say I should come if you say I should run and I do this am I running the next step has to be is that true that means your least month this year should be January if any month by any means becomes greater than January in result and impact, you have compromised on the definition of progress. For the path of the just. Is that still in your Bible? It's as a shining light that shineth more and more. I like the word more and more. More and more. It says unto the perfect day. So let's deal with this in a few minutes that we have. Is God helping us? The help of the spirit the secret behind the sufficiency of ordinary men the principal factor that is responsible for the mysterious rising and the results that ordinary men command as far as the revelation of jesus is concerned in their world now you know by now that when i talk about producing results it is with respect to the revelation of jesus and bringing him glory when we teach from a kingdom perspective we don't just teach from a standpoint of an ambition and mundane desire to make things happen our entire pursuit the moment we talk about result it is with respect to the revelation of jesus you remove that out of the equation your pursuit does not have any value what gives value to prosperity anointing ministry is that in that activity jesus is revealed and Jesus is glorified is that true yes it's called the reflection principle in John 17 and verse 1 Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed a prayer and says father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee so how is this the father glorified when he glorifies the son are we together number one How does the Holy Spirit help the believer to rise, to excel, to command results in this kingdom? Number one, by revealing the mind or the will of God. The first dimension of the help of the Spirit to the believer is the revelation of the mind or the will of God. This is very, very important. Two scriptures very quickly. Romans chapter 8, please, and verse 27. Romans 8 27 the bible says and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of god please someone shout he say the will of god one more time say the will of god now the way god designed the administration of spiritual power please look up the administration of spiritual power and even the ministry of the holy spirit is that everything revolves around the will of God. Are we together now? The assignment of the power of God is to bring you into the will of God or to keep you in the will of God. Outside of the will of God, the power of God has no assignment. Listen very carefully. One of the ways you attract the power of God is staying in the will of God. If you are out of the will of God and he brings his power called his mercy, the assignment of that dimension of his power is to bring you into the will of God. Is that true? So it's important as a rule of thumb 
the entire circumference of the believer's life must revolve around and within the will of God. If and when you are in the will of God, the power of God keeps you. And you, you, once you are in the will of God, that is where your immunity is established. Once you are in the will of God, that is when your relevance, the moment you are outside of the will of God, you are outside of the region where you make yourself a prey to Satan. Are we together now? Provided the prodigal son was in the house, there was nothing that could happen to him. No lack, no insufficiency. The moment he went out of the house and out of the covering of his father, depletion began until he got to a point where he fed with the swine. Notice that in his restoration, all that he did was to return back home. That was it. That was all he did to return back home. He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of your slaves. And he got up and did exactly what he said he would do. His returning back to the house, celebration began immediately. Is someone learning? So when the Holy Spirit helps men, he reveals to us the will of God for our lives part time. Romans chapter 12, please. When you read from verse 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God that ye present or offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice. He calls it holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable act of worship or service. Verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world. Listen carefully now. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good an acceptable and perfect will of God. So everything the Holy Ghost does through the word in your mind is to bring you and keep you in the will of God. Are we together? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost to bring you into the will of God. Jesus himself found where it was written concerning him. Is that in your Bible? Luke chapter 4. He found where it was written concerning him and then he began to quote the scripture or to read it. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. When he was done, he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. He found where it was written concerning him. And the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes, he will guide you in, in all truth including the will of God. There are many people today, listen carefully please, there are many people today who are farming like Elisha, whereas their destiny is to be prophets over nations. It is the assignment of the Holy Spirit. There is no guessing the will of God. You don't even know it. There is no possibility of knowing it. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the Father. The Bible said no man knows what is in the heart of a man except the spirit of that man. The moment you begin to pray in the spirit, I wish we had time to deal with this. Among the many things that happen is that you cooperate with the Holy Spirit to begin to search the archives in the mind of the Father. What is in the heart of the Father for you in 2023? It is a risk to start taking steps on assumption. You have to wait until the will comes. The trigger for your action is the knowledge of the will. As a man of God, don't assume that God wants you to expand. Don't assume that God wants you to start doing church. Don't assume that God wants you to organize a healing meeting. No, it is important that you walk. Your confidence is knowing that you are in the will of God. In fact, Apostle John was teaching us on prayer and he said, this is the confidence that we have. Is that still in your Bible? That when we ask anything according to his will, we know that he heareth us. So I don't know that I'm hurt just because of the volume of what I'm saying or because of the time expended in prayer, as important as that is. My confidence is that I am, God is so determined to make us walk in his will that he created a system of capturing that will as scripture and still left it, still in addition with the Holy Spirit so that we are entire in his will. Someone say the will of God. Say it again. There are many of us right now, we need to go back and ask God. This movement have been moving around the circle. Today, I think I'm a man of God. 
tomorrow maybe a businessman next week i i, I it's like i had zamfara then next week it's like i had potakot you need to take away that those haziness where satan deceives believers is becoming like an angel of light and that whole assignment is to make you sincerely veer out of the will of god satan does not necessarily need to fight you by attacking you if he can take you out of the will of god it was designed to destroy you by default Is someone learning? It is the assignment of the Holy Ghost. You ask your man of God, how did he start his prayer platform? If you think it's just luck, do it. That's when you will see the difference between the will of God and the strength of a man. When it is the will of God, simple and even foolish things produce results that for your lifetime you cannot explain because the jealousy of God is behind it. God can speak to a man. I remember years ago, this was way before just, you know, social media was just at its infancy in Africa when God gave me a word. At that point, he told me, he said, do not, he was in the place of prayer. He said, carry your teachings, raw audio, not really very clear, the best of whatever we could do at that time. And he said, all you need to do, this is my instruction, this is what I want. Put it and make it available for people and my angel will take it to the nations of the earth. That foolish instruction. You see, you can copy today and it will not work because it didn't come as a revelation of the will of God. This is the danger of blindly copying things. You can be inspired but be sure you are in the will of God. Moses said, I'm not going to go and embarrass myself before Pharaoh. One, verify you are the one sending me. Number two, give me a sign. I know who Pharaoh is. When he stood before Pharaoh and said, Thus said the God of the Hebrews, let my people go. You would think Pharaoh say, my God, I'm sorry. Who is that God that I offended? He laughed and he said, you must be silly Moses. I think you've forgotten that this is Egypt, the center of wizardry. So this is all you came to do to embarrass yourself here? Janus and Jambers, come and show him that if it is a rod he brought to become a snake go back and tell your god is not powerful enough and they turned it effortlessly you would think because the power of god were there automatically it should become the rod of um of of janus and jamba should not even become a serpent but it became a serpent right there to the point that you could not know which one is real or which one is fake but then god did something powerful the rod of Moses swallowed the rod of, 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 of Pharaoh and did not increase in size. And he held one and kept it. The God of heaven. Listen to me. Our confidence in doing the things that we do is knowing that we have paid the price with the spirit to verify and re-verify that we are in the will of God. When you are in the will of God, it does not matter who believes or who does not believe. The most important thing is that the jealousy of the one who sends you is behind and before you. For someone, God can speak to you and say, listen, people in Abia State are waiting. You are the next entrepreneur to rise. And while he's speaking, one of the ways you will know that God is speaking to you is because you cannot do what he's saying by your strength. If God tells you something you have the power to do, most likely he's not the one you heard. He will tell you what only him can do through you. If it is God that you hear what you heard should make you afraid. It should make you run back to him and say, so how do we make this happen? How do you look at an ordinary man, no one, say build an ark that will take all the animals? Three stories. He didn't say, are you an architect? He didn't say, have you tried building a small boat? That's God for you. God can look at someone you have never stood before any president and he will speak to you say the 12 presidents I'm sending you to make sure you preach Christ to them and while he's speaking you do not even have a passport God for you he will speak in a way that you must return back to him for the remaining details if it is not God listen one of the ways you know you are in the will of God is you will never hear everything the first time mm -mm. there are details he will hide and it is only your hunger that will take you. Hallelujah. 
the will of God. Let's finish up. Number two. How does the Holy Spirit help the saints to rise and to excel? The ministry of guidance. The Holy Spirit helps men by guiding them. Number one is the revelation of the will of God. Number two is to guide you. John 16, we read it earlier, 12 and 13. 13 says that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Please look up. This is powerful. I wish I had time to explain this scripture for you. That means even when you are standing in the truth, you must be guided for it to profit you. Just because you are in proximity with the truth does not mean you will be blessed by it. The truth can kill. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless automatically. Truth is like a knife. You can hold a knife in a way that it will injure you. A knife that is supposed to cut the vegetable to make the food that we eat. Because you did not hold it well, it can still injure you. Women will tell you there are times that they did not hold the knife well. And they ended up injuring themselves. The, a beautiful tool that was supposed to help enhance your efficiency. When Satan tries to use a lie and it does not work, he will use the truth to kill you. Ask Jesus. When he came to Jesus, he said, turn this stone to bread. Jesus said, it is written. The next time Satan spoke, he said, it is written too. Since it is truth, let's use truth now. It is written. Sanctify them by your truth, he says. Thy word is truth. So it is not every time he will come looking like a wizard. There are times he will speak like a preacher and mislead you with relevant scriptures into derision. Just because it is truth does not mean it will bless you. The Holy Ghost. This is where many people who just embrace scripture and ignore the Holy Spirit. This is a piece of literature. This is a piece of archaeology. This is a piece of history. When you open it, it is a book. When the scrolls are unlocked, it becomes the word. This book you see must be both opened and unlocked. There are seals that close it. It is opened to the optical eyes, but not yet opened in the spirit. And it is dangerous to read the book when it is just open and not unlocked. Because you will find many coincidences. At the end of it, you will end up hating the Bible. Because it will look like a mix of nonsense. Written by people, arguments here and there. A lying spirit came from the Lord. What does that mean? Do not be over-righteous. What does that mean? Because all those things are unfruitful to the mind. If the only thing you do is to open the book. Only the spirit sustains the, the capacity. And you will see a scripture you've been reading forever. And you will stand in tears. There are times that you can carry one verse for days and you are sitting there and it's as if you found a gold mine and you are rejoicing over a scripture, you quote it and someone says, that's nice, you are learning scripture, but something in the name of Jesus, the miracle of open eyes, guided by the spirit, in the name of Jesus, may that begin to work in your life from tonight. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit guides men. There are various ways he guides. There is a difference between leading and guiding. Or there is a difference between direction and guidance. Let me tell you how to direct. Please look up. If I'm to direct you out of this auditorium, here's what I'm going to say. Move straight, turn right, and be on your way. That's direction. Guidance will say, follow this way. There is a step. Be careful. That step can hurt you. So just because you know the road, you do not know the contours, the very things. The Bible says the Holy Spirit guides. He does not just lead. He leads, but he guides. Many of you have been led. You need guidance. You are in the place of the will of God, but how to navigate the steps, now you do not know. He told you this man is the one who God will use to lift you. Now you are with him. But what do you do? Do you walk up to him and say, you have been wasting my time. God said you are the one who will live. You see, now direction is correct, but you need guidance. It's the Holy Spirit who will guide you and say, you know what? Um, take a meal and just go and give him and bless him and don't say anything. That's guidance. You now go there and say, oh, who is this? What do you do? I am so, so, so and so. 
thank you. You are the kind of person we are looking for. See me tomorrow. Two of you can be led, but only one was guided. Most people have not opened up themselves to be guided by the Spirit. You can be in the right environment and still weary yourself. You need to pray, guide me, guide me, guide me. Spirit of the living God, guide me, guide me. For when he guides you, in addition to his leadership, there is no darkness for you. Eventually, it may not make sense while he's guiding you. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. It is like driving again. When you plot the map on your phone of a location, it tells you, okay, you'll get there in one hour, you see. But it doesn't just tell you the location. It keeps zooming and you, you keep finding out that it is helping you. Is that true? And there are times you go to a road and it is closed. It will reroute it again and show you how to still get there. Direction is not the problem. It was not your fault. Someone decided to put a barricade on what would have been the road. It takes guidance. It now reroutes and recalculates the time. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.